Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm Marty Shea uh, with Collab Feature. Um, I think you said films, it's Collab Feature, but no big deal there. Um, but thanks for calling me the nicest stranger. That's, I've never been called a stranger before, thanks. Um, <laughs> and thank you, Heidi, for putting this amazing intermittent together and giving me the chance to talk about what I love and what I do, which is collaboration and filmmaking. So, um, green button, I'm assuming. And did I? That's two, that's, there we go. Okay, so um, first, Collab Feature is a um, collaborative filmmaking platform. It's also what we call our community of filmmakers. We have over 200 filmmakers from 35 countries creating multi-director film projects. That's feature films, TV series, we'll be moving into documentaries, eventually VR and all kinds of other media. Um, and the idea is that there are a lot of creative filmmakers around the world with limited resources and lots of talent. And by uniting a bunch of filmmakers, we can make something bigger than the sum of its parts. We can um, make something that's more competitive and um, we can combine our promotion efforts. Um, so since the topic here is collaboration, I kind of want to start with the idea of how do we define collaboration? What is, what is collaboration? Is it just kind of a buzzword that gets thrown around? Is it something that um, means you know, less individual um, and more of a group thing kind of a thing? And um, so for us, the, the definition of collaboration is more than one person working toward the same goal. And I think that implies um, equality. So it's not a subordinate kind of thing. The important thing with Collab Feature is that everybody's equal and everybody has a democratic vote, and we're all defining where we're going, but everybody has an individual um, contribution that they're gonna make. Filmmakers are, by nature, very controlling people, very um, egotistical, want to impose their visions. So how do we figure out how to create a, a big vision that everybody's smaller visions can, can uh, cooperate within? Um, so first, my history is that I started out as a, um, actually I was an advertising major and hated that direction that, that, that I was going in, and um, fell into film studies. And I'd actually, when I was a kid, I loved filmmaking. I would pick up my camera and make you know, films with my sisters and my friends and, and whatever. And, um, but decided you know, advertising might be a, more, a better career choice, but I didn't, it didn't feel right. So I um, stumbled back into film studies, fell in love with the filmmaking process, and um, started working on films as a production assistant and then a coordinator and eventually a producer. But what I truly loved was writing and directing and particularly collaborating. So I had a few friends and we would co-write because I couldn't, I wasn't good at some things. I needed somebody who was, um, you know, could fill in you know, their strengths with my weaknesses. So that was the beginning of my lessons on collaboration. And I was always attracted to um, the writing teams like the Coen brothers or the Wachowski, now sisters, formerly brothers. Um, and, um, and then also in music, um, bands that were not sort of one person writes the songs and, and then they have, the, they have a band who plays it, but where th there's a group effort to help each other, to push each other along, to make, make each other better. So um, we started developing that. I have a partner named Ian Bonner, who's still the, uh, who's the co-founder of Collab Feature. So I have a kind of a lifelong number one collaborator that I've worked with. And um, so um, Ian's also a web developer, which is gonna come into play with how we got to Collab Feature. Um, so I have these kind of two careers going on. One, I'm making short films. First, they're terrible, slightly get better as we go. And then I'm working my way up in the, in the production world um, where, you know, it's a living, but it's, it's cool to be part of all that stuff, but it's not that creative fulfillment. And we eventually get to making some short films that start winning some awards and got some distribution, were put onto compilations. The thing is, like, well, what's next? You know, what, what's the next step? You're going to go make your feature film? Are you going to go spend years raising money, which a lot of people I know did or attempted to, and many of them never raised the money. They wrote the script, and... It's a, it's a very tough world for filmmakers to get to that big next step. 
So we started to look around us and say, there are a lot of people that are really good, and we have a lot of competition. What if we kind of do what we do? We collaborate with each other. What if we started collaborating with a few more people? Maybe a lot of people. Um, so Cloud Feature um, was born because if it doesn't exist and you need it, create it. Um, and I think the key there is not only if it doesn't exist, but if you need it. So don't go creating something because it's cool, because you want it. You have to need it. And we were the, the it, was, it was such a drive. I, uh, to this day, I can't explain why do I want to be a filmmaker. I don't know. Why do I see these images and say, I want to be a part of that and, and make my own um, and tell my own stories and, and create those experiences. But we needed to go somewhere that we, you know, go to the next level. And nobody was doing what we thought seemed like the obvious next step. Let's somehow figure out how to unite with filmmakers. Um, there were a few things going on at the time. So this is back actually in uh, 2008 when we first started a message board and just called it Collab Feature with the idea that we were going to get a bunch of people or, or it, that we'd met at the film festivals and see who wanted to collaborate. The message board just kind of like took off, but it was a big mess um, that we had to you know, sift through. So we had, in one, in one sense, this is like, this is going nowhere. How, how, this is very unorganized. Everybody had a different idea of where we're going. So we weren't yet collaborating because we weren't going to the same place. But on the other hand, there was a huge interest, and people were talking about it. And then it suddenly jumped out of, from, the, um, from local to international. People started to find us. In fact, the, I, I contacted a Chicago filmmaker, and he said, I live in Japan now. Could I do a segment from Japan and figure that, you know, fit that into the, to the feature film. Um, so we started to write a screenplay, and that never, uh, that, that was another kind of failed attempt, but we kept going. Um, and this is still a side project. We're still working on other things. Ian's a web developer. I'm a producer. Um, and um, we get to... Our first, uh, our first two films, which are The Owner. Um, so in the middle of, um, of writing this script that wasn't going anywhere, we kind of quit the project for a minute. And so this is, you know, just we had 15 reasons why this is never going to work. And then one day we just said, no, we still want to do this. So we had to create a MVP, a minimal viable product, an idea that would allow a lot of the filmmakers who want to be a part of this to make one feature film, but not impose an idea where they're not going to have freedom, but give a structure. So suddenly we have 25 filmmakers, and we're going to follow a backpack around the world that allows all kinds of different stories, a lot of different genres and so forth. Um, it, the film ends up being called The Owner because the backpack ends up being on its way back to its mysterious owner. It, bounces around the world, every, every segment gets a chance to interpret what's in that backpack, use that in their story, um, but all of that is a device to allow this collaboration to happen. So I'm gonna, while I kind of explain some of that, I'm gonna um, show you, that's the trailer for the owner and they're gonna see some, uh, some of the shots. So that film, it, it was a little bit of a struggle because there were some things we were learning as we went, but um, it was just kind of a magical experience. Things started to click into place we didn't expect this, this level of, of cinematography and so forth. People were like, pulling in like, amazing DPs from like, Paris who normally shoot high-end commercials to come and shoot their one four-minute segment. And the stories are connected. The backpack you know, starts in Brazil and actually ends back in Brazil in the end and, and goes to 13 countries in between through the minds of 25 different creators. Um, then we made Train Station, because while we're making this, we started getting so much attention. We got covered in uh, over 60 media outlets, from CNN to Huffington Post to lots of local um, you know, little outlets in different countries. So we made the, the second film, which is Train Station, and we kind of decided to take this collaboration to a new level. Instead of kind of stringing together smaller stories, what was the most collaborative thing we could do? And that was to make one story, one character, played by 40 different actors in different locations. So with this film, which um, is, both of these are actually now online on VOD, they're all on Amazon Prime and uh, iTunes, Google Play. Um, with Train Station, um, you're mid-scene switching from 
uh, from Nairobi, Kenya, to Sao Paulo, Brazil, then to Detroit, and that same character is now played by a different cast, reinterpreted by a new director. Um, so in all of this, um, the key that we found to collaboration, there's a couple of important ones, and one of them, and I'm glad Sean talked about this so I don't have to go into it, is that I worked, I've worked with a lot of improv actors, I go to a lot of improv, I've studied um, the rules that he just talked about. The yes and can be applied to how, to how a bunch of filmmakers are going to arrive at the same, at a, at a singular goal. So there is no, it's not, you're not allowed to basically um, argue. You have to say, that is working, that, that is what you want to do, that's the direction you want to go in. And here's how you can do it, and there, here is how it will better work with the whole. So we're constantly encouraging that. Um, the, um, the other thing we learned was that you can't just put out a message board and say, let's collaborate. It's not going to happen spontaneously. But you can't be a dictator. And so that was my job and Ian's job to figure out that balance between leading and setting those minimal guidelines as, as minimal as possible to allow the freedom. Because otherwise, why would, the, why would these filmmakers want to make something if I'm just telling them what to do? That's the trade-off, but it ends up making everybody um, make something better. They're being inspired by each other. They're given a guideline. Those limits give us um, a lot of room for creativity if you do it right. Um, and the most important rule in collaboration is that there is always a better idea. So as you can imagine, you're going to get people arguing. You're going to get somebody saying, um, this idea works better, this idea works better. And that might be in the outline phase, that might be in the script writing phase, that might be in the editing phase. Um, my first response is always, you know, let's definitely talk this out and see where we're going. But there is always a better idea. We're creators, we're creative people. Do not be stuck on do not be married to that first idea, that second idea, that third idea. There are infinite number of ideas, and we will end up finding one, especially if we listen to each other and know what's important to each other. We will find that better, um, that better idea. Um, so the platform is um, kind of what happened by accident throughout this process. But you need to organize a collaboration, especially one with this many moving parts, this kind of complexity, dealing with all this creativity. So because my partner just happens to be a web developer, he, would, he started teaching himself new you know, uh, computer science languages. I'm not a computer guy. Um, and um, built um, some features that, uh, that were needed at the time. So um, you're going to see some of them here. Um, a message board, obviously, That's, that was the basics. But um, for, the, for Train Station, the one I described where the, the film follows uh, one main character, um, we created a tree of ideas. So the film f not only follows one character played by uh, multiple actors, but it follows choices. So every time the character makes a choice, that's when we cut to the new, the new actor. Um, to do that, we started with a man waiting for his train that he finds out it might not come. And he has to decide if he's going to wait for that train that may never come, or go home and possibly miss this train that was going to take him to where he wanted to go. Sort of a little existential metaphor. But it begins then letting each filmmaker say, if he stays, this is what happens. If he goes home, this is what happens. Then when they put out an idea, they had to say the next two choices, and the next filmmaker comes in, and we ended up with like 870 different possible scenarios, and then voted on the best ones, and some, in some cases, some just went nowhere, so we, we kind of eliminated those, and, and came up with the 40 that we have in the film. So that's one example of where um, we started using technology to bridge all these people together, do something that could never have been done before, and now we have sort of a gamification point system to to manage this, to the, the whole project. We have um, instant review process. So every time you upload an idea, a script, a video, it is automatically up for review. The next, the next filmmakers that log in are going to see that, vote on it, comment on it, and um, 
they're starting to manage the process for us. So there's less admin time, and that's going to allow Cloud Feature to, to ultimately scale to more and more projects. Um, throughout doing it that way, though, there's, there's pros and cons. So in some ways, we were making the platform, without really even thinking we were making a platform, because we knew what, what was needed at the time. But it also created a lot of problems, because we, had not, we didn't think it through. Um, it was all, you know, so we ended up scrapping the original version and are actually this month about to launch um, our, this month or next, about to launch the, the next version of Collab Features platform. And um, we're excited where that's going to take us. Um, so um, the idea that we've stumbled upon, because we wanted, to be a we wanted to make films, we wanted to get to the next level, we wanted to work with other people. Uh, but what we stumbled upon is that we can use technology to unite us just to make movies. And if we can make, use technology just to make movies and to collaborate that way, then what else can we do with technology? And what is the state of um, the internet now? Where are we with um, the, the trends of technology? Are things innately, is the internet innately collaborative? Sure, it brings people together. But, isn't, but it, what I notice, I think, is the natural trend, and I think it's human nature, is to simply want things more your way, more individualized. You want things faster and now. And we're breaking, we're splintering off into, um, it's, it's helping us splinter ourselves off into groups or in, in individualized content. And it's also allowing, giving people a, a voice, and this is great. The little guy finally can get on the internet and, and do their thing and promote themselves. But there's way more competition. So I, I feel like we see that trend, that same trend that, that led to Cloud Feature through filmmaking in a lot of different areas, whether that's um, small communities needing to address problems or improve their, you know, their neighborhood to um, social activism. And um, we're very interested to see where that can go and to see if Cloud Feature can be a part of that. Um, there's um, just last week, there was an article in Al Jazeera about a, a scientist in Finland who's, um, who's actually dying of cancer and racing to finish his project, which is to um, use AI to, to solve disputes. And so the article was like, can AI lead to world peace? Um, it's crazy. You know, and, and I'm naturally a little skeptical about what, where, where he is with that. But can we, if the desire is there, can we use the technology to better organize ourselves, to agree on what is the common goal, and then to work toward that. Um, so that's what I hope you can get out of this, and hope to talk to some of you as we go over the next couple days. And um, I should also mention, just a little plug here for Cloud Feature, is we are working on a series. That's our current project. It's called A Billion to One, and its current release date is October 10th. So stay tuned. You can get on cloudfeature.com's newsletter. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and all that. Um, and again, thank you so much, Intermittent, for having me. <laughs>